Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Hacks and Hacks Flixel tutorial series. Today, we're gonna to probably cover the shortest tutorial of the entire series. We're gonna look at handling keyboard input. Now, as you can see from the screen in front of you, the text version is already up and published. Uh, I'll put the link down below. Also, if you happen to be a patron backer, uh, all of the code for all of these projects is available in the patron Dropbox link. Uh, so if you wanna actually get a little ahead of the tutorial, uh, it's a couple steps ahead there. And once again, thank you for your support. All right, so without further ado, let's jump in. We're just going to look at handling keyboard input in the Hackspixel library and it's a very straightforward process and it's entirely code based for this guy. So let's fire over. I'm about to start up a new project here. This was all covered in the past but I'm just using the fi uh, Flixel command line uh, to create a new project. And I'm going to do this in Visual Studio Code as I have been so far. Uh, now we've got a couple bits of setup to do. I need to bring an image in so that we can manipulate it. We're just going to use a simple sprite that we're going to control with our keyboard. So just grab that guy Okay, why are you going nuts, mouse? All right. And drop it into the images folder of our project. All right, so we now have uh, just an enemy uh, PNG file that we're going to manipulate with the keyboard to work with. Uh, you can see it right here. Nothing special. We used this guy already in an earlier example. You can use whatever image you want, obviously, for this for yourself. And now let's do a little bit of setup. So the default makes a couple of templates we don't need. We don't need the uh, main menu. And we're going to do everything here in play state. We also got a bunch of imports we don't actually need. I'll get rid of a couple of them. All right, so some initial setup. First off, we're going to need that sprite we just brought in. We'll call it sprite, FLX sprite. Uh, this has all been covered in previous tutorials, so uh, if I'm losing you a bit, do be sure to watch the previous tutorials. I assume that every tutorial I do builds off of a previous one. All right, so we've got our sprite. Here, we're just going to go ahead and allocate it. So sprite equals new FLX sprite uh, asset paths.enemy.png. So load our sprite from file, and we'll just uh, we'll center it again. And I just realized you probably want to be able to read this. All right, how's that? Is that better? Okay, so we created our, we had allocated our sprite, we created our sprite, and let's just make sure it's added. And let's check, see where we're at. Why is there a trailing underscore here? I am not sure. Let's do that again. Bum, bum, bum. All right, there we go. So we now have our sprite up and ready to be handled. Now let's add some keyboard logic to actually make it do something. Now we can do that in our update. Once, once again, it's called every frame. And that trusty FLXG class, that global helper class, is going to come in handy again because it has an object called keys. And that's where all the keyboard hand put, uh, input is handled. We'll just do if pressed dot left. Uh, we're just going to move our sprite to the left by one. So if we press left, move left, we press right, move right, and we'll go ahead and we'll run that. Bum, bum, bum. All right, so you see, pressing left, we're moving left. Now I've got left held down. And you see it's moving at a constant rate. Now I'm holding down right. And you see, again, it's moving at a constant rate. Now, if you want to handle individual key presses, you've got to do this a little bit differently. So instead of press, press is going to return true if the currently requested key. So if this left key is currently pressed, this will evaluate as true. But what you probably want to do a lot of times is check to see if the key was released. That is, it was touched and then let go of. And if that's the case, what you do is come in here and go if flxg.keys. We'll do this for the up and down. Press dot up. Oh, no, sorry, not pressed. That's exactly what we just did. What we want to do instead is just released dot. So again, each one of these is a collection of the stats for every particular key. So you can see in this list, all of your various keys are here. Uh, and then we'll do up. And then sprite dot y plus plus. And through the power of cut and paste, we will do down.
Oops, hit caps lock there. All right, now we'll go ahead and run that. And you will see when I press down, all right, first off, I split my signs, but it doesn't matter. Um, I press down, it only moves once. So I gotta keep, you can hear it, I'll move the keyboard close. I have to individually tap it over and over again to get it to update. So there's your differences. If you're gonna have it, um, either just released will give you an individual keystroke, whereas pressed will continue to be true as long as it's held down. Now, one thing to be aware of is sometimes you think you're gonna want pressed, but you're really not going to want to. Because uh, what you're gonna have is, um, even though you know very quickly tap and release a key, in terms of the game loop, the game loop is probably running at about 60 hertz. So I mean 60 times per second. And even though you think you pressed a key very, very fast, it's going to be pressed as like this is going to be set as valid, valid probably a dozen times, even on the quickest of keystrokes. So a lot of times you are going to want to use just released instead. So now that I'm out of here, even though it doesn't matter, let me just improve or correct my logic so up is up and down is down. Now, another thing you may want to do is actually check to see if multiple keys are pressed, which is also an option. So we'll do that. So if FLXG and then keys, any pressed, and now you can pass in an array of keys. Um, FLX key dot escape, FLX key, FLX key dot space. So, and then all we'll do in this particular case is set this guy back to where we started. So, all right. So if either of these are pressed, and I think I don't have my import, so it's gonna throw an error at me, I think. Yes, it is. All right. One thing I wish Visual Studio Code implementation of hacks had was auto import resolution. There we go. All right, so go ahead and run that. And if I hold down left, get it moving. And then when I press the space bar, boom, we pop back. Or if I press the escape key, we pop back. And that is pretty much it. Now, one thing that I do want you to be aware of is the other options that are available. Uh, so, so far we've used just released and pressed. And nine times out of 10, those are the ones you're going to use. But there are other options. And let's just let IntelliSense show them to us. So, L, keys dot. And here you go. So you can see any pressed, any released, uh, any, sorry, just released, any pressed, check status. So you can check the status of an individual key. Uh, just first just pressed so if multiple keys were pressed since the last frame it will only give you the first one first just released uh, you can check if is down so you can pass in an array of keys uh, sort of like what we just did except for this is only going to check if it was just pressed whereas that will check the status of um, if it's held down sort of like the do it once versus every time kind of approach uh, we've got what else uh, and we've got prevent default keys. This one's actually also kind of handy here because sometimes you might want to turn certain keys off like uh, Windows key, etc. cetera. Um, you can turn them off this way. And that is essentially it for keyboard handling. Like I said, this is gonna be a short, quick video because there is not really a ton to do. Now, one question you may have is, um, this is polled input. That means every pass through your loop, you do a check for it. And what you may sometimes want to do, especially in mouse handling, a little bit less common in keyboard handling, but sometimes you may want to do event-driven input. That is, uh, wire up on blah events. So uh, when um, the escape key is pressed, fire off this code. And out of the box, Hexflexel has no support for this for keyboards. It does for mouse, as we'll see in a second, but it does not for keyboards. So if you want to do event-driven input, you're going to have to drop down to the underlying libraries, either Flexel or Lime. Both of them do have an event-driven model. Uh, again, most of the time, you're not going to take an event-driven approach. You're going to go with polled approach for keyboard, which is probably why Hexflexel didn't implement anything. Um, you could also write a relatively simple class that wrapped around... Um, you know, that basically did this logic, check for any down, uh, and then fired off, uh, you know, callback code if you wanted to handle it. So you could write something like this yourself very, very simply. But that is one of those things to be aware of. There is no built-in Hacks Flixel uh, event-driven keyboard handling code for some reason.
All right, that's it for now. I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please do click like and do be sure to check out the rest of the series if you haven't already. And of course, subscribe if this kind of stuff interests you. I will see you all later. Goodbye.